When I was a young teenager, I got given a fresh start. And that fresh start showed up as the government taking me away from the only family I'd ever known, my adoptive family. Then I was put into the foster system and as most people know, it's overcrowded. And after several different homes, I decided at 14, I could do a better job myself. So I did. But what that created was a huge loneliness. There was nothing normal about me. There was nothing that, there was nowhere that I fitted. And as I grew up, it just got harder and harder and more lonely. And I just felt more out of place and never fitting in anywhere. Filling in forms was the worst. It's like name. I'd had five of them by the time I was 17, just for my own protection. Next of kin, I used to just make it up. <laughs> so through life, I carried on, as you do. And in time, that loneliness got replaced by a desire and a passion to find my family. So it started with the veto. I had to wait for that. Years passed and the veto was lifted on adoptions. And then I had to find the courage to step into that because what if they didn't want me? I'd already had one family that didn't really want me. I'd had the foster families that didn't want me. What then? So eventually I would build the courage and I'd take the step and it turns out she wasn't registered on the register. I did have the hospital though, the, the details of the hospital. And I ended up with a little bit of information. I was working for a print company and I knew the last name. And do you know how many hoopers there are on the electoral wall? <laughs> oh my God. So I printed up this letter with a little bit of information I had saying, you know, I'm just looking to see if anyone knows my family. And I, as I could afford it, I'd send out, that was when stamps were like 10 or 20 cents, much cheaper. But I'd send out, you know, a couple of hundred letters and, um, and I'd get these really nice people writing back to me saying, oh, it's not me, but I really wish you well. And it just kept me going. Anyway, I was in a not so healthy relationship. Kind of happens when you don't know what love is. And I was driving home and I had to be home at a certain time or else I was in trouble. And I was pulling into the driveway and something said to me, no, you have to go to your PO box. I'm like, all right. But that pull was so strong, I just had to. So I turned the car around and I headed to the letterbox. I opened up the letterbox and there was three letters. That wasn't anything new. It was probably just some nice people cheering me on. So I opened up the first one and it was a lovely lady who said, you know, that I um, don't know if this helps, but, you know, and just gave me some information, but, you know, I really wish you well. And I was like, thanks, that's really cool but I'm still alone. <laughs> then the next letter I opened up thinking it would be the same. And the first sentence, I'm the person you're looking for. And what was really amazing was she said, if you want to meet, I'm going to be at the museum in Sydney that Saturday. But if you don't show up, sorry, if you don't show up, then that's okay. I'll just figure that you don't want to know me. So here's some information for you. 
I went home. We were supposed to be going to an engagement that weekend. There was nothing that was going to stop me going there. So he wasn't too happy. He went to the engagement himself. Made me pay hell for that. And I called an old friend because I didn't have any friends anymore. He'd stopped them all from me. I phoned a friend. I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. She said, I'll come with you straight away. So I went to the museum. I walked in and this woman stood up. And I was home. I was home. And we sat down and we talked for hours. And I realised why I had freckles, why I had red skin, red hair, why I was skinny, why I drive really fast. That's my dad's fault, by the way, all the tickets. That's his fault. And, and I now have a huge family with eight brothers and sisters. And it was my birthday last week. Still open to presents. <laughs> and I realised if I hadn't been adopted by that family, if they had been even half okay as parents, if they hadn't been so nasty to me, I would never have had the drive to search for the mother and father I have now. And that is a blessing in disguise. Thank you. Thank you.